Welcome back. I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and we're going through a variety of videos to help you master the Husqvarna Viking Amber S100 serger. Super easy serger. We've kind of broken things down into parts that you can follow along or jump ahead depending on what you need to learn. So in this group of videos, we're gonna talk about cleaning the machine and maintenance that you should be aware of on a regular basis and also when to take it into your local Husqvarna Viking Retailer Service Center for its annual cleaning. We're also going to talk about the red choice and quality thread makes all the difference in the world, plus my tips on how to not have to have every color of thread as a cone, what you can get away with and what you might want to make sure that you purchase for colors to work with the most amount of fabrics that you pick from. So first off, when we're talking about cleaning, we're going to go through where you need to clean. So as we know with a serger, it gets linty. That's just the name of the game. I always kind of chuckle when people come in with their serger to have it serviced and they're always so embarrassed. Like, oh my gosh, I've been working and they just are like, feels bad that it's dirty. It's what it's meant to do. That cutter is going to cut. There's going to be fluff from the fabric. But you know what? As you go from kind of project to project, there's going to be a point where you're going to be like, I should kind of dust this out. And that is the key. Dust it out. Get it out. Don't blow it in. So we are a fan of saying no to canned air. Canned air is going to blow more in than you realize, and that's going to get back into the motor area. So just avoid canned air. I know it's a quick way to make it go poof, but a lot of that poof goes in and not all of it comes out. So you're looking for a brush, um, a makeup brush, a Q-tips, things like that that are going to help you just get in and get all the places that are covered with that last color of fabric <laughs> that you are using and get it all out. Once you get it out, I'm going to show you where to oil. You also can take the screwdriver and take the throat plates off and even get down underneath the teeth, the feed dogs, the ones that pull the fabric through. It makes you really kind of get in and clean that out. Then once a year, I do recommend for your sewing machine, your serger, your embroidery machine, have it serviced completely inside and out by your local retailer. Trust me, that is going to add years of love that it's going to give you and just keep things moving freely. I'm always saddened when people say, oh, I never have had this service and it's been 10, 12, 20 years later. It's everything is bone dry. So you want to go in and your service people are going inside and all those moving parts, there's a lot more that you don't see kind of behind those covers. They're gonna get everything, making sure everything's moving smoothly, oiled and lubricated. It's gonna make such a difference. And even too, things get out of balance. They're gonna make sure everything's lined up where they need to go. So when I open this up, I'm gonna to point to a few things that you need to be aware of. Of course, with this serger, push down on this part here and it really opens up everything, making it very easy to get all this area nice and cleaned out. You will find a brush right here on the front part of the door to your serger. And the goal is it's really just to get in and get as much of the lint out of the way. So brush it all out. If you want to unthread it and really get in here, that's great. You can really do it with all of that still threaded if you want. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to turn this hand wheel and right here I want is what I want you to watch. Watch on this long shaft here and then this little collar that it goes in and out. So see how it's kind of, it's even kind of shiny right now, is you'll find that as you put a couple drops of oil, and this could be the oil that comes with your soy machine. If your soy machine does not require oil, definitely pick some up at your local soy machine store. This is not a place to just substitute any oil. It needs to be a specific soy machine, super light oil. So you're going to put a couple drops of oil kind of on this shaft, and then as it moves, it's going to lubricate that whole collar area. You can even put a little oil right down here at this kind of bottom knuckle and then that will keep it lubricated. So here's the thing, next time you go to serge, you're going to create more lint and that lint is then going to attach itself to some of that shiny area. And once again, you'll need to start that process over again. But you know what? That is the only place you and I really have to take care of. Keep it brushed out, keep a little oil on hand and drop a couple drops there and keep that part nice and shiny so you don't have to stop with problems. This is huge. And again, don't forget, once a year, Schedule with your local store a full annual cleaning.
let's talk thread choice. So here's the thing with serger thread. You can get inexpensive serger thread and sometimes have trouble with your machine. I always tell customers and our students, if you use good quality thread, just like you do on your sewing machine, you're gonna have good results. So if you don't wanna be frustrated, don't start with cheap thread, old thread, get just don't. It really makes a difference. In these video tutorials, I'm also going to be using color-coded thread. So if you're at a, the beginning stages of learning this machine, you might enjoy having a yellow, blue, red, and green. And then as you put each of those threads on, you can see what they're doing. And that's why I'm going to do it so you can see which thread I'm pointing to and understand a little better about what each one's purposes as it goes through the serger. Now, if you don't have cones, you can always use good quality sewing thread like the Mettler that I have here. So you can put small cones on the back and I'll talk about what you can also do to not have to buy like four cones of red and four corn cones of oranges and in every color. So we'll uh, clarify color choices as well. This one is a Mettler thread for the serger called Seracore. I'm going going to link below, so if you're interested in purchasing good quality thread from the get-go, you can click on the links below and it will take you to where you can buy these threads. A lot of you also have embroidery machines. So I have been known to put my good quality polyester embroidery thread. This particular brand is Isacord embroidery thread. So again, great. Um, you probably have lots of colors. So sometimes when I'm doing like rolled hems and such, I can um, easily match because I can reach towards my embroidery thread and have probably the perfect color. If you're gonna mix and match, so let's say I have uh, greens, blues and such that I, I'm gonna be using, just keep in mind that some thread might be a little thinner and others a little thicker and you'd have to adjust the tensions just enough to kind of balance them in place. Now I did mention about how to not have to have all the different colors in four different cones. Here's what you're going to see. When we go to serge, the outside needle needs to, for example, match the fabric you're working on. So if you are working on a pink fabric, I would put my pink on the outside needle. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter what's on the inside. Nobody's going to see it. A lot of you are also quilters, so you know you use a lot of neutral colors. So using and having like grays or creams on the inside is a great blender. So you can still have that pink, so when you open up the seam, you'll see pink, and then just have something uh, neutral in the middle. I'm always a fan of four whites, because white is white, and you don't want it like anything shadowing through, and I usually do four darks. So whether that's four blacks, you could do a black, a chocolate brown, Brown, a charcoal gray and a navy and then mix those up because the navy could come out on that outside needle when needed and nobody's going to really see that those are all different but then you'd have matching threads so a lot of people get four whites four blacks four neutrals you pick cream or gray and then just note that you can always put a small spool on that outside needle you don't even need a comb because it's not going to use up a ton of thread so those are just some quick tips good quality thread don't have to have a lot of colors pick some neutrals and I have four of white and black and you are set to go. Coming up next, we're going to go into part three of our tutorials. Then we're going to get into threading, how to change the needles, and how to adjust tensions. Something that you're going to need to know from start to finish and an easy place to come back to and reference at any time. Remember the links below this YouTube video in the description will get you to any of our other videos that we have done. Jump ahead if you need to, review what you need to, and also some of our favorite links Thanks to our thread choices, that handheld needle threader that will be amazingly a huge benefit, and some of our favorite serger craftsy classes, including one of my serger classes that I have had online for many, many years with thousands of students in it. So if you're looking to take your serger projects to the next level, or you just don't know what projects to use your serger on, those craftsy classes are wonderful. Online classes are great because you can always go back and rewatch them or sign up for their monthly subscription and watch all the classes that you want at any given time. That's a great option too, the subscription to Craftsy classes.